Right, to our other featured cup tie, Bedford Town from the Ryman League against second division Peterborough United. The Lord Mayor's show last Saturday, he ran on Thursday, and now Bedford. Busy week for Barry Davis. The town of Bedford, home of John Bunyan, father Trevor Huddleston, and comedian Ronnie Barker. And his sporting exploits, Paula Radcliffe, and Sydney gold medalist Stephanie Cook and Tim Foster, and Barry Fry. Born here, played for the town and managed them. But now, the boss of the opposition. Waiting to add to his memories, Grant Haley, whom Fry released from Peterborough in January of this year. And a Bedford side of part-timers with a sprinkling of league experience and a mixture of age and youth. From 34-year-old Lee Harvey for nine years with Leighton Orient to 18-year-old university student Steve Jackman. Peterborough arrive in what Fry described last week as relegation form after a third consecutive defeat at Wickham last Saturday. They welcome back the experienced David Oldfield for whom Manchester City once paid £600,000 and they seek to find again the form which brought eight wins in the first two months of the season. Cup exploits were Peterborough's foundation leading to their election to the league in 1960 and they're not unknown hereabouts, a club poster recalling the day when Bedford held mighty Arsenal at Highbury. And they were four minutes away from winning the replay, finally going down in extra time. Now they're playing from left to right. And the first goalkeeper to get a feel of the ball is uh, Mark Tyler of Peterborough. And that's a typical example of determination required in the FA Cup. Provided by Kevin Slynn. Man in charge is Phil Jocelyn. This is Fenn. That's not a bad strike. Goalkeeper very confident that he was going to clear the crossbar into the little enclosure behind. There's a man who knows about scoring goals, scored 99 in uh, 662 games, played for Kettering. Roger Asprey, the manager now of Bedford, formerly of Russian and Diamonds. It was he who took them to the conference. Great plans to rebuild this ground. Covington got there. Maybe a bit lucky in the first instant. Fenn! Well, it would have been a picture one. Like his uh, shot earlier on, just too high. But I think you'll find that he does this on the half volley. Well, it may even have been full. Now, here's Dyer. Is he going to go all the way? Well, he waited just too late and got challenged by Joseph. But a good run by a man who's an international for Montserrat. And I would suspect that he's probably uh, on his own in the Ryman's League of that position, or maybe in uh, home football. Just waited too long, but he's got the corner. Too long for Jackman. No, oh, but a very good attempt by Covington. Really got up well, Covington. But across the face. The nearest thing that Bedford have had in this half. Goalkeeper thought he got it in his hands. Jackman. Nicely done by Mark Paul. Slim waiting to go. Dyer trying to dig it out. Paul again. Dyer around the outside. Neatly done. Goalkeeper got a hand to it. And in the end is able just to pick it up from Miller. Good stuff though from Bedford. Paul who got inside uh, Pierce. Good support as Dyer got control of it and showed great intelligence by making the wide run and trying to set up the chance across the goal. Goalkeeper did well and the challenge was important by Mark Joseph. <laughs> Cook. 
Covington. There's the player down, having not got the header, and seemed to rather twist himself in the knee. He just lost the flight of the ball, wasn't going to get it, but I don't think there was too much pressure by, uh, by Fenn. And they get good applause from the uh, Bedford faithful. Uh, it's a painful, very unfortunate injury for a player who really had an excellent first half, Paul Covington. And he's replaced by another Paul, Paul Wilson. Huge uh, experience in league football for eight different clubs, beginning at Huddersfield. One short of 370 appearances, in fact, for uh, eight clubs in total. Needed foot by Haley. Harvey's head, Shields, Dyer, Slynn. Chase for Paul, it was a good ball by Slynn, and Dyer is inside and he's unmarked! Tries to side foot it, it's not going to make it. What an opportunity. Oh, Wayne Dyer. Just wanted to take his time and really didn't give it enough oomph. Good break. Paul is offside again. But the best opportunity of the match fell to Wayne Dyer. Seemed to scuff it as he was challenged and Tyler with time to get back and palm it away. Harvey, Slynn, Slynn again, Adams, good block, Miller, good play, first time a goalkeeper has really had to uh, fling himself to be sure, except when uh, Tyler got back on his line, when it seemed that Dyer had to score. It was neatly done by Slynn and Dyer again. And then finally the shot from Adams, which was blocked. And then Miller on the follow-up. And the goalkeeper watched the bounce. I think it might have curled wide anyway, but he wasn't to know that for sure. But they have youngsters in the crowd. <laughs> Another nice thing you get at these smaller grounds in days like this. The Comments from the crowd. Watch Oldfield there. Watch what the old man does, ref. It's a bit tough on uh, David Oldfield. He's not the oldest on the pitch. 33. And another corner for Peterborough. Green and Clark in the six shot area. Edwards, Joseph, and Ray to come from further back. Half out by Jackman. Back by Shields. Fenn. Going from one side to the other, that's a really good stop. It was directly at him, but he even he had to react quickly. Fenn's final ball in as the ball crisscrossed all over the area, and it was Andy Edwards' header. Well, last season, uh, needed replays in the first two rounds before going to Stamford Bridge in round three to lose at Chelsea. at London Road and the uh, two managers who know each other well breathed in smiles and the assistant managers too but uh, Bedford did the Ryman's League proud particularly uh, Lee Harvey at the back who I would make man of the match and there was uh, no great goal between the teams and looking back on it the best opportunity really fell to Bedford and I'm sure that uh, Wayne Dyer will wonder for many a long day how it was he didn't score but somehow he didn't hit it hard enough and uh, Mark Tyler got back to turn the ball away as a result they've got to do it all again there will be another 
local derby at uh, London Road, Peterborough, between Division Two of the Nationwide League and Premier Division of the Ryman's League, Bedford. Typical local derby, really? Absolutely, I think it's the first time in 28 years in management that I've come and played for a 0 0 draw. Both clubs need the money. <laughs> That's my excuse, anyway. I, I think they had the best chance, they didn't did, they? Without a doubt, without a doubt. And uh, my defender done well to uh, get a little block, so it sort of took the sting out of the shop. Um, although we, we didn't really have anything to trouble their goalie apart from the header from Edwards. And um, I was pleased to get a draw, to be honest. I, mean, I was delighted with the way our team responded, really. I thought we was terrific all, all through the game. And, uh, you know, we defended exceptionally well, competed in midfield. And, uh, you know, it was a very tight game, really. Neither goalkeeper really had an awful lot, you know, of shots to save. But, you know, all credit to our lads. I thought their attitude was first class. And uh, I thought we thoroughly de deserved um, to go to London Road for a replay. But it's not all over, is it? I mean, no, it definitely ain't all over. And anybody thinking um, we, we've got them back at uh, London Road and it's a uh, foregone conclusion. They, they caused us enough problems today and uh, they'll no doubt on, on the bigger pitch and all that cause us problems again. Yeah, they've got themselves a replay and they're in the hat for the second round draw, but Bedford should have won, shouldn't they? I thought Bedford were the better side, they had the better chances. Uh, they're the best player on the pitch, Mark Paul. He definitely shouldn't be playing at that level. He good on the ball, good off the ball. When he gets it here on the right-hand side of the pitch, it's a great little turn. Absolutely fantastic comes inside, plays into the box, and when it comes back to him, he shows so much composure here. He waits for Dyer to come outside, and then plays it, comes to Miller at the back post, he just needs to hit it, or even a good first touch and hit. Unfortunately for him, it's a bad first touch. Good movement from Paul, and then he's got great vision here. Has a quick look up, sees Dyer, got to hit it first time. It's the best chance of the match, and if that goes in, then it's all over. Now, I saw a quote from Barry Fry in, in one of the newspapers this morning who expected you to be rather scathing of his team. You <laughs> no, disappointed? Not at all. I know Barry quite well, and his teams have always been renowned for class and quality, <laughs> ability to pass and move, and especially <laughs> defensively. They always try and play themselves out of trouble and, and do it very, very successfully, and yeah. today was no different. Bob gets played down here. Edwards comes across, picks it up. <laughs> and that would, have, that would have gone in row 40 if it had been row 40. And then the other side, of course, it's the same sort of situation. It's Ray this time. Bit of time and space, right? <laughs> You're not being sarcastic, are you? Barry, I'm only kidding. My motto has always been, if in doubt, launch it. Yeah. That's it. And you think they might get through? I think they will get through. I think they'll be too strong for them in the replay. OK, thanks, Alan.